crazy side note little story that I've got to share before I go. Um, I've been working on this painting throughout the month of June 2019 um, and for Christmas this past year my mother gave me this shirt uh, because she knows that I'm a big nerd about medieval art history um, and she just gave it to me as just a shirt to wear with no clue that I would be like actually painting the thing. Uh, so I'm kind of enjoying, whoa! <laughs> Wow, okay, I hope you didn't see what a mess my bedroom is. I don't have a functioning tripod. Uh, broken tripod is the most professional way to end a video. Bye guys. Turns out that's not the end of the video, not just yet. It's about two months later and I finally got some prints that I'm really happy with. They are Ziegle's. Um, I keep wanting to say Gisli. I actually have no idea how to pronounce French, uh, but they are really, really high quality prints. Um, it's not like printing with an inkjet printer where you only have four colors of ink. Uh, the one that I got is eight by 10 inches and it is printed on archival quality gallery wrapped canvas. And I'm just floored by the quality, the amount of detail that was able to be printed, the color accuracy. Um, I'm just really, really pleased with it. And I'm going to do an experiment on this one um, and I'm going to attempt to gild it. These prints are kind of pricey. This gallery one was almost $40 just to get printed, um, but I think it's really worth it. And I'm really curious to see how well the gold takes to the printed canvas and uh, what quality of reproduction I am able to make. I'm actually going to follow a different pattern of gold on this canvas print. Since it's smaller, I'm going to have a really hard time getting the gold outlines exactly where I had them on the original. Um, but in the real carpet page for the Cairo from the Book of Kells, uh, there was more gold. There was more gold here on this central part. Um, I didn't have enough to do it on my ginormous 30 by 36 inch piece, but here I think I'm going to get everywhere inside of the Kai that is yellow. I will gild that and then I will gild the outside of the row and the iota. And from there I'll just add little bits of gold as I see fit. So I'm going to have a little bit more playfulness with this one and just see how it goes. I'm working with a very tiny, tiny brush. It doesn't have a number on it. It is uh, 10 over 0. And it is just tiny enough to do this. Iconographers, especially in the Eastern Christian tradition, um, both Orthodox and Catholic, will do a lot of icon writing where they use gilding. And they call this breathing on the glare or whatever their size is um, in order to make it sticky to adhere the gold. Um, they refer to it as like a breath of life, which I think is just beautiful. I have a cold, which you can maybe tell by my voice. Um, and I sneezed and I made gold fly everywhere. I'm going to talk through some of my process here. Now that I've been doing the gilding for a while, I've kind of figured out what works and what doesn't. Um, so in order to protect the parts of the canvas that I don't want to get covered in gold, I'm using a little bit of powder. Um, my research said to use talcum powder, but I didn't have any of that, so I'm using alum root, which is used in place of flour in um, gluten-free cooking sometimes. But I kind of figure it does the same thing. It really repels moisture and it's uh, non-destructive. Like, it doesn't appear to be doing anything bad to the inks on this print. And so I'm just going to kind of rub it into place on areas that... I know the gilding will be nearby because I don't want the gold to stick anywhere that it should not. Then I'm just gonna take a cloth and very lightly wipe some of that away. And then anywhere that I know I will be gilding, I'm gonna take just a little bit of water and kind of brush away at where the powder's at. This may or may not be necessary, but the other benefit of getting a bit of moisture down there is that when I apply the egg adhesive, it kind of flows. It's kind of like when you do a painting with water and then you put ink on top of it and the ink fills in and it looks really cool. 
So it's a little bit like that. So it just gives it a place to go. It's like drilling a pilot hole if you're building something with screws, you know, stuff like that. Um, so I'm gonna be working away, removing some of that alum root powder. And now I'm ready to apply the actual glare. So earlier I showed how I made my glare mixture by whipping up a meringue and then letting it sit overnight and getting this adhesive. Um, you can add in honey to make it less brittle. You can add in gum arabic to make it even more sticky. I'm just working with what I've got here. Oh no, I picked up a bit of gold. Um, so I'm applying this relatively thickly. I'm not doing gesso gilding where the gilding itself is actually raised, um, but I don't want this to be so thin that there's no tackiness to it. And I found that applying a very thin line, I need to let it sit for about only one minute for it to reach the optimal level of tackiness. And then that's just enough time for me to come put some more lines on down here. And I'm gonna wait until I get just the right amount of tackiness without having to breathe on it, um, just because I have a cold and that seems like not the most hygienic thing right now. So, as we do this, let's check the tackiness. It's still too wet. Whenever I check the tackiness, I'm really careful to only just touch the tip of the glare so that the surface tension pulls it up and I can check the tackiness that way. I do not want to apply any downward pressure whatsoever or it starts smearing and going where I don't want it to go. But I found the best way to check the tackiness is with my actual finger um, because otherwise I have to use pressure and I can't just use sensing wetness. Um, so I'm gonna keep applying some down here Okay, so the glare has set for about a solid minute now, and I'm using scraps of gold that are left over from the main painting. So there's not as much like large pieces of leaf, but I'll take the scraps that I have and just gently set it down on top of the glare. You can tell it's still tacky if it kind of grabs onto the gold and sucks it down like a magnet. Um, and this is really just the surface tension of that liquid um, pulling the very, very, very thin leaf onto it because it's so adhesive. Um, well, physically adhesive with that surface tension. Okay, so I'm gonna continue to apply all these leaves. Now, all of this excess gold I'm not too worried about because once everything is dry, I'm going to gently brush it off and then I'll be able to preserve these scraps of gold and make gold shell paint out of it, uh, which is a whole nother experiment for a different project that I'm working on. So I'm not too concerned about whether or not the gold is smooth as I put it on, since the glare will allow me to burnish if I want, or I can keep a really textured effect. And I'm gonna just continue to apply the gold. The one important thing is that there's no downward pressure of the brush or whatever tool you use when applying the gold. You cannot touch the actual adhesive, you just sit the gold on top of it. Because this is the point where you can smear and make things really bad. And you need to make sure that every place you want to have gold gets covered in gold because there's no pushing it into place later. You'll just have to do a whole nother coat. And considering how this is going to have to dry overnight before I can do anything to it, that just starts to take a long time. Now I can tell just from how quickly the gold is not adhering that some of these areas are too dry. So my options either are to breathe on it and revive the tackiness, or in this case, I'm just gonna apply a little bit more.
even with a one-tenth size brush, I'm losing a lot of detail in the outer lines when I'm applying the gilding. On this small of a scale, it's just crazy. So I am re-outlining these sections with some black ink in the hopes of making it look more defined and clean than it was a minute ago. I finished applying the gold leaf to the print here. Um, and one of the things about canvas is that it's so textured that the gold leaf, uh, it, it really is kind of bumpy and I can only do so much to smooth and burnish it out. So I'm not sure how much you can see in this lighting, but because of that texture, it really catches the light and scatters it back. I think it's really pretty, even though it's not a perfectly smooth sheen. Um, and I did go through and hand apply some ink lines around the outside of the gold, so that way it gives a bit more distinctiveness because when I was applying the gold onto the canvas, the bumpiness, like it was smearing a little bit outside of the lines where it should have been. Uh, but overall, I'm really pleased with it. I think next I'd like to try printing it on a nice quality paper and try applying the gold leaf to that. I'm hoping to offer um, some of these prints for sale both on archival paper and on these gallery wrapped canvases. Um, so I hope you've enjoyed the process of the Cairo being made and check out my website if you'd like any more information.